If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf. Every month, if you donate to the Patreon at a certain level, you get a deck tech. And at one level, you get a deck tech based on a given card, any card you want. Well, Christopher Long, this month, wanted Living Lands to be his. Living Lands is a difficult card to make into a deck. It's fine for EDH, it's fine for Cube, and it's not legal in, say, Modern, but Legacy? That means that I have to somehow try to find a way to fit this thing into Legacy. <laughs> or Vintage, which would be even harder. I wasn't sure for a while how to build this, but then I took a look at a deck that's actually a bit of a mainstay. It's called Nick Fit in Legacy. For those that don't know, it's an aggro control toolbox sort of mid-range deck. <laughs> it's a lot. It's green-black base, and usually it splashes white or red for different options. So for example, and some cards we'll get to here, we're actually green-black base and white and red. So its most important card, I went, well, yeah, its most important card is Veteran Explorer. It's a one-drop creature. When it dies, each player gets to up to two basics and reveals them and puts them on the battlefield and then shuffles. In Legacy, a lot of decks have no basics, or will have one. Uh, for example, I play a deck, uh, Legacy Infect, that has one basic. A lot of Delver lists have zero. So in and of itself, that can often, often be purely asymmetrical. But even if it's not, Legacy decks tend, with a few exceptions, to be built operating under the assumption that you need to prioritize zero, one, two, maybe three mana spells. Look at a typical Delver list, for instance. This deck does not. Because we have Veterans Explorer, or Veteran Explorer, we're able to go a little bit higher than that, and sometimes a good bit higher than that. Now, in this deck, the only lands that we can get, the only basics that we have, are Forest, which may not technically be right. Unfortunately, one of the issues with Living Lands is that it only makes our Forest into 1-1s. One -ones. Living lands is difficult to build around, I may have said before. Uh, and so only fours give us that, so we could, however, play a swamp, a plains, a mountain, uh, so that we have a little bit of utility, we can get those and play around wasteland. Uh, but I'm just trying this out, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you know why we're doing this later on. There, there are other reasons, too. Uh, next, we have some more ramp, Deathrite Shaman, because we have ten fetch lands, we're certainly able to play a uh, good old death right the one mana planeswalker and of course mainboard graveyard hate etc you get the idea uh, next we have three copies of academy rector this is something that nick fit will splash white for pretty consistently academy rector like veteran explorer says when it dies x x in this case is you get an enchantment from your deck and you just stick it straight on the battlefield you don't have to pay its mana cost, nothing like that. So often you can find, say, Omniscience. Uh, we are getting Living Lands, which seems like a bit of a downgrade, to be sure. Uh, but Living Lands is best when you're able to attack with all of your lands. But if you're casting it normally, that means that you had to tap at least four, well, tap four lands in order to get it out, and that's four that can't attack. Under normal circumstances, of course, you could have uh, mana producing creatures, lands that make more than one mana, etc. But usually, that's how it works. With Academy Rector, we can get it out without having to pay mana, using a number of means that we have in this deck. And then we're good. And then we go in for the, well, there's still one ones, but we'll work on that a little bit in the rest of the deck. Uh, next, we have some, some of a toolbox. We have an Eternal Witness for value, even in Legacy. And then we have Dragon Lord Dramoka, Angela Merkel herself. Six mana in Legacy. What? Again, though, with Veteran Explorer and with some other ramp that we have in the deck, we're able to get away with that occasionally. Now, of course, we don't want to overload on having 
you know, a bunch of <laughs> six mana spells, we can't do that. But having one or two in the deck is probably fine, especially given that uh, Dramoka can be tutored up. Tutored what with? Well, we happen to have Green Sun Zenith in the deck. This can be a three or four of in Nick Fit, but we aren't as much of a toolbox deck, so we only run three. But this gives us the ability to go and get Veteran Explorer, go and get Deathrite Shaman, get Eternal Witness or Dramoka later on in the game, and we can get a land, I might as well say, it's Dryad Arbor, which doesn't really benefit from Living Lands, it's already a 1-1 forest, but does give us ramp. It's the obligatory turn one Green Sun Zenith into Dryad's Arbor for ramp. Uh, so next we have enchantments. Living lands. Only forest, only makes them one ones. Later on in the game, this can be pretty brutal uh, in that your opponent would have to deal with a bunch of creatures that you've built up slowly over the game that they haven't been able to deal with up to that point. However, you open yourself up to Supreme Verdict, uh, Toxic Deluge, even just Spot Removal on your lands. So if you're going to make this work, be very, very careful, especially against Verdict decks, because you pretty much have one turn. It's a tough life. It's a tough life for Living Lands. But it looks like it's a lot of fun to brew around with and maybe get a big old grin on your face if, if it actually goes off. Uh, but Let's say that you don't just want to do it through combat, which seems smart. How else might you get damage through with Living Lands? Well, one is to use Goblin Bombardment. Now this two mana enchantment lets you sacrifice a creature to ping, or deal one damage, to a creature or player. Yes, that means that you can use any of your lands or other creatures to shoot down your opponent's creatures. Yes, that means you can sacrifice Veteran Explorer on turn two to go and get two more lands. Uh, so, it does have utility in that, and of course you can sack Academy Rector to go get Living Lands. You get the idea. If you've gotten the opponent down to a low enough life total, you can just machine gun, I guess, uh, all of your lands and creatures out uh, to beat your opponent. Because Living Lands probably won't be enough to get them there on its own. That being said, if you can keep the board clear enough, even these one ones will eventually be enough to get through. And that's where Pernicious Deed comes in. So this is a catch-all, I guess you'd say. It doesn't hit Planeswalkers and it doesn't hit lands, but it hits every other permanent type. Creatures, artifacts, enchantments... Okay, those. <laughs> so uh, that means that your Planeswalkers, which we have a couple in the deck, will survive, and your lands will survive until you turn them into creatures with living lands. So you can use this to clear the board up first, and again, take out Explorer and Rector, um, and then later on swing through with your 1-1s. One if your opponent has been playing, say, Elves, this is often where it ends up being played, in Nick Fit, if they overextend on the board, well, it plays like any other Wrath. Alright, that being said, Dryad Arbor's a creature. Keep that in mind. Uh, but those are our only enchantments in the deck, so unfortunately Academy Rector doesn't have too, too many targets. Uh, but Bombardment makes Living Lands a thing a little bit more. Teeny, tiny, itsy, bitsy bit. And then Pernicious Deed for generally being able to remove anything we wouldn't otherwise be able to deal with. Now for our instance, this one's a little bit tricky. I'm running four Abrupt Decays, and I'm not running any sorts to Plowshares. We have so little white in the deck, I really don't want to over to extend into white any more than I have to. And it's Academy Rector and a couple other cards, Daroka, and that's it. Uh, given that, we use black more readily, and we have more lands that generate black. We have four in the deck. Uh, oh, and of course, fetch lands will go and get by you, so we have well more than that. But if the opponent takes our one Savannah out with a Wasteland, well, we're done with swords for the rest of the game. So that's my reasoning there. Feel free to disagree, but that's why I'm doing it that way. Next, uh, we'll actually skip ahead to sorceries. So we run four Cabal Therapies. <laughs> we run Hand Attack, good for fighting combo decks, uh, good for trying to remove their disruptive elements early on, and if you flash it back, well, the flashback cost is sacrifice a creature. Again, Explore and Rector, die if we do that, so that means we can get their beneficial triggers. 
it's always nice to be able to go turn one veteran explorer, turn two cabal therapy, flashback cabal therapy, and then start to do other things. <laughs> Eternal Witness and the Veteran Explorer to do it again. All right, so next we have, let's see, so I mentioned Green Sun Zenith as a tutor. We also have Demonic Tutor. It's, uh, let's see, Diabolic Intent, which is Demonic Tutor, except it has an additional cost, Sacrifice a Creature. We do that quite a bit in this deck, as you can see, and we haven't even gotten to all the creatures yet. So that's perfectly fine for what we're doing. It's even beneficial, perhaps. Next we have three copies of Innocent Blood. It's our... we usually want to... Alright, each, each player sacrifices a creature. We're okay with that, our opponent usually is not. Great for fighting true name nemeses, or giant creatures you'd find in, say, Eldrazi. Um, it doesn't hit a specific card, but that's often where Abrupt Decay uh, or some other elements will come into play. Goblin Bombardment, etc. Next we have... Four Lingering Souls for fighting the Force of Wildex, or just actually just value in general. I very much like being able to have four 1-1s on a card. And by the way, again, Goblin Bombardment, etc. I'm sounding like a broken record, I'm sure, but you get the idea. Having a bunch of little creatures isn't such a big deal. It's having a bunch of creatures that we care about. Alright. Now, for our lands. Very simply, our fetch, we have 10 green, or excuse me, let me make sure. I'm sorry, 8 green fetch lands, my bad. Doesn't matter what they are as long as they're green. We have 6 forest. 6. So, <laughs> Veteran Explorer has a lot of targets, but again, only forests get turned into 1-1s one with living lands. So that's our priority. We don't have any swamps, any plains, any mountains. That maybe could be changed up if you just need some, but... I'm trying it this way, just because it gives us the most lands that can be turned into such. If Wasteland's more of a thing in your meta, take one out for a Swamp. Uh, next we have two Bayous, a Savannah, and a Taiga. And of course, Savannah is for Academy Rector and Dromoka. Taiga is for Goblin Bombardment. Now, we do have a Dried Arbor, which could be brought up to two. Elves often runs two, for instance. Uh, so that could work. You could take out a forest, make it into a dried arbor. And we have two Phyrexian Towers. So this is part of that legendary land cycle from Urza's Saga, I believe? Urza's somewhere. Urza's block. You know, the one that had Academy, or Teleran Academy. <laughs> it might have been a little broken. Gaia's Cradle, Sarah's Sanctum. Well, here's Phyrexian Tower. Doesn't make nearly as much mana most of the time. Uh, but if you sacrifice a creature, you get black black. We do that a lot. So, lots of mana will be made. Uh, we have two, even though they're legendary. We want that effect that much, and it's ramp, which seems kind of good in a deck that wants to have a higher curve. Before we get to the sideboard, I jumped over the Planeswalkers a little bit, so let me hit those. We have Garuk Relentless, who as a green card can fight other cards, so green removal. And on the flip side, we get Death Touch creatures and the ability to tutor up a creature. Uh, well, to add it to our hand at the cost of sacrificing one. Conveniently, it makes its own sack target, so there's that. And then lastly, we have Sorin, Lord of Innistrad. It's tough. He's not green. He, he makes us have to have a Deathrite Shaman or both Savannah and a Bayou. So, he, he's the easiest to cut, but he has an emblem that says creatures you control get plus one, plus O. Oh. And that's pretty good when you're <laughs> you're trying to win through 1-1 one, one forest and a, just a bunch of tokens. We have so many tokens. It make your head spin. Uh, <laughs> lots of tokens. And so giving them uh, extra power seems beneficial enough in this deck that I'm willing to risk it occasionally. Uh, another choice I've considered actually is a Johnny Unyielding. Yes, the six mana one. Uh, the main reason for this is because Good old Johnny is tremendous card event. Oh my goodness! I, I watched. I've been watching the news too much. I'm starting to talk like him. Tremendous. Make your head spin. Uh, his card advantage is awesome. He has a sorts of plushers that can deal with Imrakul, um, and the ult is just icing on the cake. 
<laughs> when you have a ton of creatures and you can start dumping counters. It seems pretty good. Uh, so maybe we put that in instead of Soren. Again, in this deck, we can get up to that, uh, that much mana. Although, I went against that because I didn't want to have too many six mana spells. It's just you, Dromoka, that's all. Uh, next for our sideboard. Now, I tailored this sideboard specifically for Christopher Long's meta. Yours may vary. So, here we go. We start off with two Carpet of Flowers, which give you more mana against the blue decks. We have a Gaddic Teague, <laughs> because it shuts down so many decks. Shuts down Force of Will, shuts down Storm, yada yada, you get the idea. They have to deal with it first. Uh, Kitchen Finks for life gain, you know, for burn and just extra creature removal, etc. Uh, Loaming Shaman for graveyard decks. Maelstrom Pulse to get rid of permanents you can't deal with very easily. Obstinate Bailoth for Pox and for Burn again. Uh, you can actually reach four mana against the Burn decks. I know, that's insane, but you could do it. And by the way, having this many basics actually can work well against Price of Progress. Just be careful playing around it. Next, Sudden Shock for the Glistener Elf in your meta. Uh, three Surgical Extractions for Graveyard Decks like Reanimator and Dredge. Three Thoughtseize for Combo Decks. And a single copy of Toxic Deluge to deal with... Just, it's, it's a three-mana Wrath, and it deals with True Name Nemesis, etc. You get the idea. Alright, and that is this Living Lands deck. Chris, I hope you enjoy it. Even if you're not Chris, I hope that you've <laughs> maybe been inspired. If you have any suggestions, please feel free to let me know. I know this is not a perfect deck. Um, even with the constraint of having living lands, I feel like there's something that I'm missing. And so I'm curious to see what you all think. Uh, feel free to let me know. Alright, that's it Magic Community, and I will see you later. Bye bye